guys and we're here with a new deck and this is my Jund Warstone Surge deck and I'm just going to say straight off this deck was an absolute nightmare to build I generally didn't think I'd have it ready in time for today <laughs> I made a build, played a couple matches, it didn't work they tried to fix the mana, it didn't work and then eventually eventually after, um, trust me this took a lot of playtests and I think I've got a deck which I'm happy enough with and without further ado let's go straight into the cards problem with this deck is that with a Warsome Surge deck, I feel you have to either go black, red, green, or black. I mean red, green, white. I think white or black, you have to choose between one of them. And I chose black. And let's go into the cards. And the first card is Undying Evil. And this card is basically why you choose between black or white. Because you either choose this or Cloud Shift. They, they both have their advantages and disadvantages. And I have thrown in... And Dying Evil because obviously it works really well with everything in the deck, it can help protect your bigger creatures as well, and also deals damage when everything enters the battlefield. And that's what Undying does, so yeah, it's in here. Next, we have two copies of Bloodgast. Bloodgast is amazing in this sort of deck, it's a really good early game, it never really goes away unless they've got an Anger of the Gods because they're not going to want to waste uh, Angelic Edict on this guy. So he keeps coming back, he keeps dealing more damage, he keeps shocking them as he keeps coming in, and yeah. Haste, he helps finish off a game as late. He, help, he helps finish a game off late with haste as well. We've managed to put in two uh, tribute hungers. We had to drop one just because I've had to cut a lot of good cards, and I'll go through that at the end. Uh, tribute hunger, really good because helps. It's tribute hunger. It sacrifices creature you gain life. You can get pretty low early game if they're rushing. This guy helps save that. If you play an auras deck, this is fantastic. And yeah, it's what part of my m removal. I've got a couple of other cards, and we'll go through them when we get to them. We've got two Grave Bone Muse, and this is one of the inclusion, like later inclusions, because I have a, had a lot of card draw in this deck, like one-off card draw, like you know, your Elvish Visionaries and the Cycle guys, and it just wasn't enough. And I needed something mid-game because I felt like this deck. My problem with my first deck is I was jumping from like two, three mana cards until six. So it was a huge part of the mid-game where I wasn't really doing much. So she, she's in there, and she obviously draws your cards. The life game isn't really a problem, because I don't run many... I think I only run one of the zombie card, and I rarely ever actually cast them. So this is basically just one life a turn, draw a card, and it really helps you out. It helps you get money you need, cards you need. It's And it's also mid-game, and it's, yeah, it's a great card. We've managed to put in two of these Viscera Draggers. I think that's how you say it. Yeah, these guys are really good. You don't generally want to cast it for four, you want to cycle it and then unearth it later, which gels really well, obviously. I've also got a... It gels with another card, not even just Warstorm Surge, which is a really good addition to this deck, which I've added, which I'll get to when I get to. But yeah, I mean, if you need cards early game, this guy's... He's basically... I think of him as like an Elvish Visionary, apart from he doesn't have a body. <laughs> yeah, that's him. Next we have two Indulgent Tormentors. This guy doesn't really gel with the whole... Like bounce, bounce and like do damage to. But he is really good. He's whenever I build a black deck, he always finds a way, and he's he's pretty good. Five five damage when he enters the field. Obviously, he's got a lot more power, which is beneficial. And they need to remove him, otherwise he starts really being a thorn on their side. So yeah, he's in here. <laughs> Two rescue from the underworlds. I had to drop one. Just I, I wouldn't have dropped it, but ev the play test with this deck, it's just. I, get, I seem to have three in my opening hand every game. This card is just fantastic. Gets you back a really big threat. Both enter the battlefield. Both do the end of the battlefield effects. It's just ridiculous and obviously it's fantastic in this deck. You're probably better off running three, but I've just been drawing them like a fiend, so I cut down on one. Next we have our bombs in black, and we have shieldred. This guy works really well. I mean, it's a ridiculous card. This <laughs> There's not a black deck where this guy isn't fantastic. Well, girl, I suppose I should say. That'd be, let's not be rude. <laughs> but, yeah, Swamp Walk. If they've got a Swamp, they can't block it. Which means they're pretty much dead in three turns. Then this is the main ability for this deck. At the beginning of your upkeep, return creature from the graveyard to the battlefield. That's obviously devastating. And then it's got the bonus of another fantastic ability, which doesn't gel, but you, you can't... It's a great ability, and yeah, they have to sacrifice creature on their turn. So it's like a bit like a free tribute to hunger every turn, which they do, which you don't get in life from. 
Then we have two Rune Scar Demon. Rune Scar Demon's here because it can get me a lot of. I've got a lot of cards which are good situationally. Like all my bombs generally do something different. So if I need, if they've got like one really big creature that I can't get round, I can get Shielded. They'll have to sacrifice it. If I need uh, to take out a lot of little creatures, I can either get Inferno Titan or uh, Anger of the Gods, depending on the situation. And also, if I need to get life, I've got Pelica Worm. So this guy, is, he's sort of a jack of all trades, and he comes with a bonus 6-6 body. And even if you don't need anything in particular, you just you just get the other one. So yeah, this guy's fantastic. He's in the deck. And that's a black. And then we move on to red, and there's not actually too much red. We've got two shocks just for early game. It was I started off with four, and then I, I had to cut down to get other cards, unfortunately. It does really help. You can sh There's a lot of creatures which you don't want to waste, like... Tribute to hunger on and stuff, so you can just shock it instead, or you could shock little creatures, then tribute hunger so they get gain more life. It works well in that regards, and it also, even if you need a late game, it can finish off. And then we have Anger of the Gods. Now, this wasn't in the original deck, and then I realized I just didn't have anything for early game. Like, my early game stall, it's it's better than it was, but it's still, if, they, if they're fast enough, you really don't have time to get your big threats out so this can just wipe the board it doesn't gel with some cards like your little your little creatures like your vision and obviously that's not as great when you want to get stuff out your graveyard but it's in here because I, I think i feel it's a necessary evil and you can just play around it if, if you know you're going to anger the gods so you've got anger the gods in the hand then you wait for them to play out then you cast it and then you cast all your little creatures so it's in just because I, need, I needed a board wipe and there's there's only two in this format so yeah he's in <laughs> This was also a new addition, Ogre Battle Driver. He's one of these cards, whenever I thought about building the deck, I always thought he'd be card like number 62 or 63, you know. Great cards, he'd be really tempted for him, we could never find a place. But this guy has been, he's been, man, I'd say he's been MVP in my playtest, and it's just, he gives you another win condition. They have, they, they can, like, <laughs> I'm trying to figure out words, but I won a game before where I had this guy out, and I had three unearthed creatures, in, um, two unearthed creatures, I mean, in the yard. And they they'd completely forgot about them, so they overswung. They I mean they overextended, and then he just came back and hit them on the counter, and I got a rage quit. <laughs> so yeah, he's he's fantastic, and he definitely deserves a place in. Then we have Inferno Titan. Inferno Titan is just devastating. You can wipe out small creatures, or you can just blast them in the face with Warsome Surge. This guy deals nine damage when he enters the battlefield, which is practically if you weaken them enough, that's practically like instantly kills them. So yeah, he's in. I mean, he's of the red bombs, he's definitely best. It was between him and Storm Breath Dragon. And yeah, Storm Breath Dragon's are haste, which is obviously great. But I think you can mix around with these two. And someone just died outside, so yeah, sorry if you heard that. <laughs> then we've got the main card, Warstorm Surge. Oh god, no, not, not you, Genesis Hydra. <laughs> Warstorm Surge. Warstorm Surge is just the reason I built the deck, obviously, is it's the Warstorm Surge deck. And whenever we journals Battlefield deals damage equal to that creature's power that can end games fairly fairly fast if you've got enough bombs in your hand it can also clear out little creatures with your smallish creatures and it's a fantastic card now we move on to genesis hydra i had to cut one which was heartbreaking the problem is is that i feel in this deck there's not this even though i've added a lot more mid game stuff which which is why there's still one there's you have to cast this guy for a lot to get have, have, have to have a chance of getting one of your big creatures I think you have to cast them for uh, 9 or 8 if you want to get some really powerful threats. And But he's still good in this deck because obviously you can cast him for like 4 and then he'll... There's still a lot of good things like you could get Grave Bomb user an Ogre Battle Driver. Or even like one of your card draws. So yeah, he's still in here. He's still a fantastic card for his versatility more than anything else. And I could have had to cut one which I'll... <laughs> it was heartbreaking. It's one of my favourite cards. It just It just had to go. Then we have two Elvis Visionaries. I had to cut these guys down a lot. I think I made room for them for the cycle guys. And these, this is just green. Any green deck, it's hard not to include these guys. I had to cut down, like I said, just three seconds ago. But I think it's worked all right. I still see them fairly frequently. I've I've got other early game stuff apart from this. I don't need one every match. Then we run three Cultivates. Cultivates obviously helps with the mana, which... I've been struggling in the sort with this well with this deck in general, but I've got a good base now. I feel like 
I've, I think I've play tested five matches and I haven't been mana screwed yet. Mostly due to Colvets being in here. This obviously can get you two of any source you need. Which I think this deck I've got two. I need two black at any time. I need two red only for Inferno Titan though, and three green for Pelico, which we'll come to soon. So it's quite demanding on mana, and Colvet helps you sort out that mana. So it's in. Then we got the Pelico Worms, we've run, we've run two, this guy, if you get, if you're taking a lot of beating early game, this guy saves your life. Trample 7-7, seven, seven, gain 7 life, and draws a card if they do have the removal for it. One of the best cards in the format still. It's, yeah, it's in, <laughs> there's nothing more you can really say, everything in the card justifies why it's in here. And then we finally we run our last bit of removal on August Spree. It was between this and Ground Assault, and I run August Spree just for, simply for the instant. I do... I'm still thinking the jury's still out in between this and Ground Assault. Depending on the matches, I may switch and move around. This guy's obviously, it can buff your big creatures as well, which is tempting to help get the finishing blow. So he's in, and yeah, it's just, it's it's a close one. Ground Assault, obviously, if they've got bigger threats, then Ground Assault is better, because you generally can keep up with your mana. So I may switch it. This guy's more versatile, though. So in, in the minute while I'm just playtesting, this guy will be in. So there's all the cards we've run, and I'll go through some of the main cards. I'll just I'll just fly through them, of which I was wanted to run, but I couldn't. Quest from the Great Lord was one of them. Just it's not enough room. <laughs> it it's obviously devastating. I'm not gonna uh, tribute hunger. There's there's I don't even think I'll bother trying to find the cards. I'll just talk about them off the top of my head. There was also a uh, Vengevine. Vengevine obviously works fantastically in this deck. It's just, I had to cut a lot of the Unearth, I had, I'll find him in a second, Hellspark Elemental. Hellspark Elemental obviously works fantastically, it's just, he doesn't help you early game because he just sacrifices, he just deals damage and then dies. So he's great late game and when you've got Warsome Surge out, he just wasn't helping you enough early game, he was just, he was dealing damage and then dying, I mean I might as well just run like Shock or something, just shock him in the face for all the good he was doing. So I don't really, I'm not casting too many creatures early game, if you look I've got, what well, I've got, Elvish Visionary, and yeah, I mean that's pretty much early game, with Bloodgast, so <laughs> I don't have too many small creatures which would obviously work really well with, uh, what's it called, with, uh, Brain's Gone, early creatures that would work well with Vengevine, there we go, <laughs> I just had to say it slow, <laughs> and then we keep going through, and Storm Breath Dragon, obviously I talked about that before. It's a toss-up between that and Inferno Titan. I think that's down to preference more than anything else. The, the Elvish News were a really hard cut. As always, I always regret not having Reclamation Sage when I come across an obelisk or something. It's just too it's too niche -y. niche, I suppose, to consider running. I was another another hard cut was Arbor Colossus. I've passed him. Where is he? There he is. Just for the reach more than anything else. And obviously he's a big guy for six. The triple green I think is just too ambitious in this deck at the minute. Even with your cultivators you struggle to get that on turn five. So it's a tempting one. I may run him if my mana sorts itself out and I do agree with it. But then I'd have to cut something else. So it's it's a difficult one. If you, if you do, This deck isn't obviously the only run you can build. If you have preferences or better ideas then share them in the comments and then I will get back to you and we will justify it and hopefully build a better deck. And further on we have another card was uh, Soul of Ravnica, um, Soul of Zendikar. <laughs> Not Soul of Ravnica, that would be ambitious in this deck. Uh, if I can get on to him, there we go. Uh, Soul of because obviously he generates creatures, quite big creatures as well. He's got Reach which helps with flying. He's, he's a good card, I just feel he doesn't... He's great when you're winning, but when you need help, he's not going to be around to save the day. While Pelica Worm will. Terra Stomp has that double green again. Obviously, he's massive and he can't be countered, which is so nice. It's just the double green is too hard. And then we'll go. Well, might as well animal and mention to the Ground Assault. No, I don't want to put one in. Uh, yeah, Ground Assault. That's, it's a toss up. I'll definitely be thinking about that. They're the two cards I would run in that place. And now finally we'll move on to the lands, which took a long time to sort out. We run all three Savage lands. 
two Rakdos Gilgates, three Gruel Gilgates, and three Golgari. The main components of this deck are the green and the black, and I think black was had way more mana symbols than any other colour, but green is also, I'd say, almost as important, so that's why I've got, basically, I think, what, I've got three, six, nine, 14, 14 green, and then five, eight, ten, thirteen black, so I've, I've even got more green than black, it's just, green is more vital in this deck, I mean, I, would, I didn't want to build it around green, but it just happened, and when it, the problem with my old decks, I was always drawing my green, even though I had way too much green in here, and then red, you do have enough red, you only need one card which has double red for its mana cost, so it's not too vital, but I do, st still do run quite a lot, just for the dual lands and stuff. The curve is awful, <laughs> it looks really bad. It does work though, I have played a lot of matches and I have, I have managed to dig myself out of holes. Mostly due to Ogre Battle Driver. <laughs> but there you have it, and this is the deck I'll be running this next week. And hopefully, if you've got any improvements or suggestions, I'm I'm all ears. It's definitely, it's a good, it's a very good deck. It's just it could, it's not 100% complete. I'd say there's still a couple decisions that need need to be made. So uh, thanks for watching, and see you guys hopefully tomorrow where we will be playing with this deck, and you'll get to see how it works, and hopefully we can get some good wins. So thanks, and see you later.